With a background as an Army interrogator, Greg Hartley has become a leading authority on body language, writing 10 books on the topic. He now shares his experience with the corporate world and executives on Wall Street. He is also the host of my favorite show, The Behavioral Panel, on YouTube. Welcome to the show. Today, I'm sitting down with an expert in body language and interrogation, Greg Hartley. Greg, I want to welcome you to my show. It is such an honor and a privilege to have you on. I'm such a huge fan of yours, and I think you already know that. So in the intro, I said that you are an expert in body language and interrogation. So let's just start right there from the very beginning. What exactly is body language? So let me give you my little, my formal who I am. It's my little short speech. I'm a former Army interrogator. I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written 10 books on body language and behavior, and I spend most of my time in business. And what body language is and is not, I often say it is the single most boring thing on earth because it's all about repetition and seeing differences. If you are the kind of person who's looking for something mystical, I'm not the guy. I always say, it simply is watching, watching, watching. And if you watch me, you know, I'm like, hold on a minute, there's something changed, a little thing. And sometimes it's just a little muscle there. Most of the time it's something big. So what I always say is body language has five parts that I can teach you in 10 minutes to start looking for. And then what you have to do from there is to learn to see everything that happens and treat it like either the body's trying to communicate something to you or trying to hide something. If you get that, you got it. It's easy. Yeah. You know, so I want to tell everybody how I found you and how I've started to learn a little about body language. So you have a massively popular channel on YouTube called the behavior panel that you do with Scott Rouse, Mark Bowden yep. and Chase Hughes. I am but, probably your, yeah, I'm probably your number one fan. I mean, I guess everybody says that, oh, thank you. but I watch you guys every single day. And I told you earlier that, um, you know, my fa well, my favorites are your coverage of Prince Andrew, um, mm -hmm. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, um, yep. uh, Casey Anthony, you know, all the, all the pop oh, yeah. culture type things, you know, I love that. Yeah. And so I go to sleep every single night playing that 10 hour Amber Heard Johnny Depp video. So <laughs> I want to thank you guys for that long video because, and I've, and I even posted on that and people have said, I do too. And cause I was like, this sounds silly, but people agree with me. They're like, I go to sleep with it too. So I'm glad I'm not the only one, but I found you that way on that channel and I love it. It's, it's just so fascinating. So I have learned how to. You know, I'm not an expert in it like you are, but I have learned how to take and watch people and watch for the changes. So I always, of course, like everybody else thought, you know, if this right here meant one thing, but it, it not, doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean anything. It's like you said, it's the changes. So um, I know we can't go into everything, but give me something like, for example, that I'm doing now. Tell me, tell me about me right now. <laughs> Well, well, discomfort makes us look for places to put our hands. It makes us look for things to do. <laughs> well, let me give you the Greg Hartley short version, you know, the, the easy. I'm, I always say I'm the dumbest guy you know. Everything I learned, I learned in the Army. And I try to keep it simple because when you teach soldiers, they have to be able to remember it under stress. So I give them mnemonic devices and even tools to remember it. So let me give you my five short pieces of body language. And those things are gestures, emblematic gestures. And that's something that has cultural meaning. So things like the OK sign or thumbs up. Make sense? We do that on, on our thumb. So we'll remember it by looking at our thumb and thinking, that's a gesture. The second thing we do is an illustrator. And an illustrator is the brain punctuating its thoughts. And that's me wagging my finger, that kind of thing. So we'll use that finger for illustrators. The third is regulators. And I'll use my middle finger just to point to the fact that I can stop a conversation with that. And so a regulator is a way we control conversation. It's putting your hands up. It's you know crossing your throat. All of those kinds of things control conversation. So it's gesture. Didn't do it. Illustrator, <laughs> regulator, then adapter is twisting a ring, doing something like that to release nervous energy. And you feel yourself doing it when I'm talking right now, I'm sure. Yeah, I but as you do that, it's a way you release nervous energy. And it can be unique to the person. In fact, it becomes the thing that we notice the most on the show often. We'll say, watch that adapter. Watch Amber Heard whip her head around doing mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And then finally is barrier. So that's gesture with a thumb up, illustrator, regulator, adapter and barrier. And if you can learn those five, you're golden. Yeah. And just to tell you how to learn them, instead of trying to make it difficult, take a card. I learned this from Ronald Reagan, by the way, take an index card and write on it gestures. And for the next 
if it takes you a day, if it takes you a week, if it takes you a month, if it takes you a year, get to the point where you never forget what a gesture is and they scream at you. And then when you get done with that, go to illustrators or choose them in any, any order, but get to the point where you can't miss those because those are what people do. And three of those are tied up in communicating and two are in protecting. So the three that are in communicating are the okay sign or that gesture, the illustrator wagging our finger, the regulator controlling the conversation. Adapters and barriers serve no purpose other than making the self feel safe. Oh. So we cross our hands. We do all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. It makes sense. And when you started talking, I, I, I started this for some reason. I just, you know, when you start talking about the ring, I just went to that. I'll tell you what I do a lot on here, too. And I think, it, like I just did, I do this a lot. And I know that you guys <laughs> talk about that a lot on the show. But I find myself when I'm talking to somebody and I feel like they're, like I had Arthur Bohannon. Have you ever heard of him? I had him on a couple of weeks ago. I know the name. I don't know why. He's like this I'm major really guy in the FBI and he invented like light okay. fingerprints on corpse. But when he was on here, I was a nervous wreck just like I am with you. So I was doing this a lot and my mind kept thinking, I kept hearing you guys in my mind saying, you know, don't do that or the steepling or stippling, whatever it's called. And I Steepling, was like, yeah, yeah right. I was like, don't do that, Christy. But, you know, I was just. Well, the reason Chris. Chris, the reason I teach people not to do it is because when you're feeling superior, your fingers are up. When you're feeling like you're in a compromised position, your fingers are in the front. And then when you're feeling compromised, they rotate down. Yeah. And the reason I tell people not to do it is because a guy like me standing across from you is going to be like, I got control of this situation. <laughs> yeah. so don't, don't ever give anybody all your cards before you start to play. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this question really quickly before we yeah. move on. Um, I had heard this many years ago, and I actually started using it during job interviews. I had heard or read that if you put your hands up on a table or if you do this with your hand palm out, that means open and honesty. Is that true? Because I always started using that in job interviews. Well, people will feel like you're being honest and open because there are a lot of myths in body language and all those myths, even though they're not true, it doesn't matter. Because if people believe them, you know, like touching your nose means you're lying or that kind of thing. You got to be careful with that. I, I often say, if you're going to job interview, don't touch your nose because <laughs> a lot of really bad body language guys have been out here spewing this stuff for decades. Yeah. And so they think this means you're closing me out. This means you're lying. Mm -hmm. Licking your lips means there's all kinds of absolutist body language that people say. And it, it works. You're telegraphing something that you think they want to hear. When you put your hand up like that to me, you know what it says to me? Wait. Because oh. yeah. your brain usually will go like that for wait. I got something yeah. to say. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, uh, speaking of the nose thing, I saw Charlie Adelson do it in his trial, and I thought, that's a liar right there. <laughs> but, you know, because like, I was like, he's lying because he went like this. I was like, he's lying. But I guess, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that. But it's what we've heard, and, you know, we tend yep. to believe myths all of our lives. If we hear them over and over, we'll believe it. But yep. So you said you are you are an Army interrogator. First of all, I want to thank you for your service. How long were you in the Army? Almost 20 years. Wow. Thank you. My whole family is military. My dad's side, like, well, my mom's side, too. So thank you for that. I really have a deep appreciation. Really my deep, pleasure. Yeah. I have a deep love for the military. So um, so what exactly is an Army interrogator? What I picture is that you grab the enemy and just, like, tell me your rank, name, rank, and serial <laughs> number. Is that what it is? <laughs> well, you know, what's funny is that's a lot. I, I taught interrogation for seven years after I left actually be getting out in the field interrogating. And I would always say, do not ask those four things in order because almost every army on earth, those are the required things. And those are required by Geneva Convention. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so if you don't, if I don't tell you my rank, then I don't get the privilege of my rank. If I have enough rank to give me any privilege. And if I don't give you my social security number, then I lose privileges, not rights, but privileges. And the minute you ask those four things back to back, what do you think happens in the person's brain? They go, oops, that's what they told me not to say anything yeah. more than that. So I rarely did. I would say, just sit down in the chair and start mm -hmm. talking to them. And I would say, tell me about how you got here. Then I make sure I got the right guy talking to him and making sure I'm getting the right thing. But interrogation is, it's just like, I always say it's a meeting with a purpose. Most meetings that people run are garbage and they have no agenda and no purpose. And they're just to keep a job, mm -hmm. candidly. And I worked in corporate America for a long time. And I would say, why are you having this meeting? Why are you talking? <laughs> But an interrogation is a meeting with a purpose. And there's one person who's controlling the outcome, and that's the interrogator. And what we do typically, I'll run through very quickly what the steps are. We establish control. We say, sit in that chair right there, put both hands on your legs, and don't make any sudden moves. The guards don't speak whatever language and may take it as a, as a hostility, for example. Then we make sure we got the right guy, and we start a rapport building process where we figure out what that person has in common with us so they'll want to talk to us. It's really about getting them to want to talk. 
Now, are there ever times you scream and yell? Yeah, you do occasionally. If you look at me, I mean, most people would think I have that kind of look. And in my interrogation days, I had that kind of look. So often I would work with a woman or a guy who looked more friendly, and then I would be the bad guy, you know, scream and yell and do that kind of thing. And then you never win doing that. So then the other person comes in and develops trust, and they get the information. Mm -hmm. And what an Army interrogation process looks like, just to get to, just to get to be an interrogator, you got to go through language school for a couple of years, depending on your mm -hmm. language. Then you go through another six, seven months of interrogator school, and then you get to go out and start trying it. Wow. So it's it's a long process yeah. to get there. So you're you also teach a resistance to interrogation. Now, sometimes when I watch your show, I think when I see people, I'm like, they're they're actually teaching us how to. Because sometimes I've thought, okay, these guys are teaching us how to get away with something if we're ever interrogated, but you're really not. And I'll tell you how I know that is because I sent you a message the other day and said, watch that video. Did you watch my video? And I, I watched it. Yeah. I watched it back and I was like, I was watching myself. And, you know, when I do my videos on Facebook, I try to be just me, but I was catching myself doing disdain and contempt and like, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like. And I thought, even if somebody teaches you how to not do it, you're still going to give it up. You're still going to do it because your body just reacts certain ways in certain situations. So well, Chrissy, the problem is the problem is more complex than that. What I love about it is everything you know makes you more susceptible to me because I'm going to put pressure in places and look for leaks. And because you're keenly aware that I'm reading it, you know how you feel right now. Yeah. And I'm not trying to read you. Imagine if I'm interrogating you and I'm putting oh, pressure gosh. on you. You're going to leak. You're going to leak. Because I'm going to use... Now we're talking. When I'm interrogating, it is psychological pressure to get what I want. So I'm putting a lot of pressure. I've already profiled kind of who you are, what I think you will be susceptible to. And I, I'll have a list of four or five things I'm going to try. And then once it starts, I pay attention to you and pay attention to what's happening. And I watch every little fidget you do and notice yeah. when I see leakage. And then I use that to go after you even harder. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, I would tell you that it is much harder to contain than you think. Cause it's like one of those, Scott always says, it's one of those whack-a-mole games. Yeah. Something comes <laughs> up every time you, you mm -hmm. think you've got it under control. So yeah, it, it's tougher than it looks. Yeah. So of all the shows that you've done, I mentioned, you know, like my favorites are Prince Andrew, Casey Anthony. Mm -hmm. I also loved your Jody Arias. Probably my favorite one of all is that Stephanie Lazarus. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, oh, I, I know. I love that. So of all the people that you've watched, who would you most like to sit down and interrogate? Like, you know, before who would who would have been your most favorite? Well, you know, we do a lot of true crime, of course. And the true crime stuff, I, the ones with children, I hate. I mean, those yeah. it just sickens me that people would hurt their a child, much less their own child. Yeah. You know, I mean, whether it's from violence or whatever, those I, I wouldn't. I don't like talking to those kind of people. So yeah, I, I would interrogate them to get the, the information. But mm -hmm. Anna Delvey is among the best I've ever watched. Yeah. Anna Delvey is a con artist and she is masterful. All that giggling she does mm -hmm. is a sync up. What she's trying to do, and she does it mostly to men, you've noticed with the women, she didn't do it. What she's trying to do is hey, 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 giggle until the guy laughs. Yeah. And then she starts reeling him in like a spider. And I would love to be there. And what I do usually <laughs> when someone's doing that is I pretend like I'm falling for it right up till the end and then lock it down and i would love to see what that did to her because she she is a masterful con wow yeah she, she was um i'll tell you when i had art on a couple weeks or two three weeks ago i noticed that i was giggling a lot with him but i think it was nervous giggles because like i Why have times? yeah because i had i was like scared just like i am with you or like not scared but like nervous and I was nervous giggling, and he was just kind of looking at it, and I thought, hey, this guy's going to think, why did I come on this show with this goofy girl? <laughs> so, you know, it's just, <laughs> but it is what it is. So. Well, and, you know, the thing is, we all release nervous energy in some way. You know, I say, if you're, if you're listening and you feel nervous and you don't want people to see it, just curl your toes in your shoes. But we all let it go. Nervous smile, nervous laughter, all those things. You see me often go, that's just nervous laughter, no big deal because you're being interrogated. Yeah. Anybody who pretends like when they're in interrogation, they're going to be okay. They've never been interrogated. Yeah. They've never been taught to resist. They've ne never been taught any of that because it is a stressful moment. Mm -hmm. If you are acting normal, something is wrong. And that's yeah. a good, another good indicator. Oh, you look too comfortable in here. How the hell did you get here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, I, I, I've even thought, you know, what if somebody, I even thought of this over the weekend. I thought, what if somebody just went and they were just totally stoic like this? It's going to come oh, out somewhere, one. like you said. It's going to leak somewhere. 
So we got one. Um, what was his name? The guy who was the chief of police. I'll think of his name while we're talking. Um, but that guy, that guy was a he tried resisting interrogation, sitting there stiff. Yeah. And then he starts leaking. Yeah. He couldn't hide it. Yeah. Russell Williams did the best job of resisting because he was using actual things I can't share with you, but mm -hmm. I can identify mm -hmm. that we teach people to do. I could wow. see it when he was talking. So, wow. It's, yeah, it's, so your family, does your, is your family ever like, stop reading me? <laughs> I mean, do I, you, <laughs> you know, in the beginning, they probably were because they thought I would do it all the time. And now they know I, I mostly try to, Chrissy, I mostly try to turn it off. And yeah. I'll say I turn it off and my wife will say, no, you don't. <laughs> but I can, I turn it off unless I feel the need. And I try to surround myself with people I trust. Yeah. And that makes a big difference. People yeah. you love, people you trust help. And then if, if I have a doubt, and we all project on other people anyway. That's one of the mm -hmm. biggest dangers in this yeah. is you project onto someone and you injure a, a relationship because you're yeah. not careful. Yeah, that's true. So you are, like you said, an author of 10 published books. That's a lot of books to write. I'm an author as well, and I've got eight of my own, and then me and Amy have co-written like 16 that's together. A um, but that's, that's a, lot. a lot of books. Yeah, so I have your book, How to Spot a Liar, and I love it. I was going to bring it, and I ran off and left that, and I got here and sat down, and I went, I forgot my book. But <laughs> what? so with that book in particular, How to Spot a Liar, have there has there been anybody who has written you or talked to you and said that book saved my relationship or that book broke it up or we do we get i, I marianne and i wrote that book together marianne was my writing partner Let me, i'll give you a little backstory here in a minute on how we got together and that kind of thing because i never planned to write my first book honestly never really had any idea i would write a book but the um yeah i've gotten lots of emails and letters and you know back in the day i got some scary letters back in the day i had a guy from prison one time write and say you're the only guy who can get me out of prison and wrote Ooh. like a letter that thick <laughs> and when i didn't respond a few weeks later i got one twice as thick oh wow and so that was a little creepy but wow. <laughs> most of the time it's people i've had people who say look I, I never even realized how slowly i had gotten boiled into this situation like in a bad relationship thing i call you in love or, or captivity because you don't realize it and you yeah you're being stripped away of your dignity slowly. And I've had people write me and say that. And I've also had people write and say, I, I suspected this person was lying or that person was lying. But after I started to pay attention, I realized it was just me being insecure about certain things. So yeah, I've had a little bit of all that. And that book's been out for 20 years almost. 20 so years, I've, wow. Yeah, I wrote I wrote it in 2004, I think. We launched it wow. in 2005, so 19 years. Yeah. Wow, that's, I love it. I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I ordered it. Um, a few weeks ago when I, you know, when first booked oh, you and really enjoyed that book. So I want to move over to I'm the your... old guy on the team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been the, doing this for 20 four... years. Oh. <laughs> I didn't yeah, know I'm, that. I'm the oldest. Oh, I'm, well. I'm the oldest and I've been doing this for, I mean, I've been since I started body language in the eighties, but I've been in front of TV cameras and that since probably 2003. Wow. When the first Gulf War broke out, I was covering all the interrogation and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of CNN. Did a, I've done a lot of, a little bit of everything. And then recently, more of our own stuff. So yeah, it's been fun. You know, you mentioned um, a few weeks ago, I forget on which one it was, or maybe it was a while back. I don't know. Cause like I said, I binge watch you guys all the time. Like I, I, I watch them over and over. You mentioned um, it might've been the Jody Arias when you said, I covered that for court TV. And I was like, that's where I know this guy. I remember you being on court TV years ago. I th yeah. Well, yeah. I'm I, I, Benny Paul, uh, funny. We were at crime con in Orlando back a few months ago mm -hmm. and Vinny Politan ran me down. He saw me across the place and ran me down because I used to do a lot for Vinny mm -hmm. back when he was back in those days, uh, court TV was in the same studio as CNN. So wow. you'd walk in and they had their one little studio right behind where the morning express and all those guys were. So yeah. I'd run into those people all the time and I did a lot for them. And then they kind of changed mm -hmm. directions and court TV moved off to be its own thing. Glad to see him doing so well. Cause yeah. I mean, I, I, he's a great guy. Yeah. I, I love him guy. too. I just love that whole, the whole, th I just love the true crime stuff. You know, I don't get into the, like the really, like you said, the children stuff. I really don't, I can't watch that. That's just too much for me, but anything else I'm, I'm game for it. So especially Jody Arias. Well, we're recording and we're recording another knucklehead who hurt his kid this week. Uh, and it's just, it's a really good one only because you can tell exactly when it happened in the interview mm -hmm. and he's trying to hide it and he's just stupid. So yeah. it's, you guys came here and covered the Summer Well stuff, didn't you? Not oh, like a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, we met. We actually, met, well, we know them, uh, Don and Candace. We mm -hmm. interviewed Don. He, Don was forthcoming, met mm -hmm. us, and I won't tell you exactly where, but at a hotel. We mm -hmm. went into a 
conference room and interviewed him for two and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, if you don't think that guy thought he was innocent, I don't know what it takes yeah. to come and sit and talk to two guys who've interrogated. And then we yeah. talked to Candace on Dr. Phil's show, of course, mm -hmm. and that went a little differently, but yeah. Yeah, we know them. We know yeah. them. You know, speaking of Dr. Phil, I want to bring this up. I'm going to go ahead and jump over here. So you guys just signed on with Dr. Phil's new production company. Is it called Merritt Street Media? Is that what it is? Mer or yeah, Mer Merritt Street Media is the new network and it'll be launching. It'll be on everybody's TV because it's on direct TV and dish wow. and just about every cable network. So it should be fun. So tell me about what you're going to do with him. So uh, we've known him for quite a while, and we've been on his show a few times. He's going to bring us in to analyze news and do all that on his network as well. I talked to him a couple of days ago, and he was saying, well, it looks like we're going to start up on the 2nd of April instead of the 26th. Today was supposed to be the launch day, but they moved it out because they're getting more network coverage and that kind of okay. thing, bigger network. But the first season, we assume good things, the first season is based on our show. So we took, for example, we'll pull footage from one of the shows you like. Prince Andrew is definitely in there. O.J. Simpson's definitely in there. Oh, yeah. And we pull a handful of those and we say, okay, let's talk about what we were doing in this episode. So it's us more candid and sitting in a on a little flat stage, four of us mm -hmm. in chairs, talking about what we did and then showing some of the clips and then coming back and doing a wrap. Yeah. And in some of them we do live, first time ever, footage from each of those same cases. Wow. So we'll pull up a minute and a half of Andrew that we've never covered and each of us will do our thing, and then one of us goes to the board. They're building for us something really nice, it, it, assuming everything goes as we think it's going to. Mm -hmm. they, they have been very, I, mean, I have never met nicer people, candidly, than these. And the people who own the network before, you know, that they're building this from, mm -hmm. who owned all the studios that we had to go into, or the Crouches from, T, from TBN, if you know who they are. Yeah, but I do. Wonderful people, yeah. the whole family, just wonderful people. Oh. And before we ever signed anything, they took us in and said, this is what we built for you temporarily. And they built the studio for us temporarily before we ever signed a contract. Oh, Just, wow. And he said, you know, look, we'll make something higher tech later, but we need to get content in now. Mm -hmm. And so they had to do a lot of work. Director, producers are just fantastic folks. It's been more fun than any of us could have imagined. So, you know, I'm really nice long rambling, but yeah. No, I'm really looking forward to that. And I want you to do me a favor. Say hi to Dr. Phil and Robin for me. And, and I will tell you how, how I know them. I don't know if you've seen on my page or not, but in 2015, December of 2015, on December the 16th, I was a guest on his show and they gave me a brand new car that I still drive to this day. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I had I had entered a contest in like August or September of that year. Um, I gave $10 to Robin's foundation when Georgia smiled, her domestic violence foundation. And out of 40,000 people, I won the grand prize. And they flew me and my oh, wow. son out there for a week and said, she said, would you share your story on the air? And I was like, I don't think so. And then she <laughs> told me, she, yes, you know, that's very private stuff, being in an abusive relationship. Yeah. And she said, but you yeah. can help a lot of women because not everybody escapes. So I decided to tell my story. Listen, those two people changed the whole trajectory of my life. And I don't want to cry, but um, Dr. Phil and Robin, okay. I kept up with her for a while on Instagram. We haven't spoken in a while on there, but they changed by giving me that car. They gave me and my son money. Uh, it helped us to move out of that state back home to West Virginia for a couple of years till I moved down here. But they completely changed my life. And to have an effect on somebody's entire life like that is, um, it's just, it's, it's, it was amazing to me. And they touched me in ways that I don't know if they'll ever understand, but say hi to them for me. And I would actually had tickets to go on January 17th to go down to Dallas Fort Worth area to see Dr. Phil oh, Joe, yeah. but I couldn't go. Something happened and I couldn't go. Um, but I told Sharon, the lady who does the tickets, she emailed me back and I said, look, I'm sorry, I can't go. She's, and I told her, I said, I wanted to see them again. And she said, anytime you want tickets, let me know and I'll get you in here. But oh, nice. please, please say hi to them for me because they well, are. Go ahead. I, I am so glad to hear that story, Chrissy, because I, I say this to people all the time. Anybody who says these people are not genuine doesn't know a thing about people. Right. They are genuinely right. who they appear to be. I mean, I've spent yeah. enough time with them now. You know, he called us out of the blue in the beginning, and I, I've spent enough time with him. It, he's genuinely a friend is yeah. the way I, I said this to him early on. I said, you know, whether we do anything with you or not, what a friendship. He's yeah. just been a fantastic guy. They, Offered all kinds of help when my, my mom was sick. and I mean, yeah. just, just a genuine guy. So yeah, they, I'm with you. They are I, I will great mention. people. Yeah, they're just, just yeah. great people. My, my heart, I just love them. Um, you know, I don't know them. I just know the, the few days that I spent there, you know, on the set and stuff and just uh, – 
And, and and on that show, I had the nervous giggle too, and I think they had to cut a lot of it out because I because when I watch it back, I can hear myself giggling and being like, Hee-hee-hee. and I thought, gosh, I probably look like an idiot up there, but but they were just so gracious and so kind. And at the end, when they actually took me out of the studio, I had no idea they were giving me a car. So when they took me out of the studio, we were walking down the backstage, and I was like, I was thinking, where are we going? Why is a guy with a camera in front of us going backwards? And I kept thinking, where are we going? Because the show was over. I was like, where are we going? And then they get me to the end and he starts telling me about like you know you know we, we feel bad about your story and then they took me outside and and when they showed me the car my knees buckled and dr phil actually oh, helped wow. that guy's giant his shoulders are so broad he's, <laughs> you know, he's so a big old boy he he's is and so boy. so uh, he just kind of like held me up but i mean it was just like that was I have never had anybody to do anything that great for me in my life and just complete, like I said, completely changed the path of my life, the, the path that my life was on. So please tell them that I still think of it. And I still drive that little red car, that little red Dodge Star. It's got 149,000 miles on it. So <laughs> um, I will so, tell him for sure. And yeah. I, I'm glad to hear that story. Thank yeah. You. Listen, tell him one day, if he's ever looking for another talk show host, I can come to Dallas. <laughs> How he's, got, he's got a nice little gig going down there. Yeah, tell him he can what put my show on. <laughs> what they're building is astounding. Yeah, yeah you're got, your whole set is phenomenal. beautiful. Even though you said it wasn't finished, it's a really pretty set already. So They did nice work for us. They were, yeah. Like I say, they did it without us not signing anything. They were just such wow. generous and, and graceful people. I, I really like those guys. Yeah. And think of those guys as friends, too. And, and Matt's... Lori, Lori Crouch mm -hmm. is a fan. She watches the show. So she knew all the stuff we were talking about. She's, yeah. So it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I really, I've always loved TBN and the Crouches, you know, I always love them too. Nice so folks. Yeah. nice folks. Yeah, yeah. Very kind. So, um, so now I want to hop over to your website, bodylanguagetactics.com. I see that sign behind you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. There's you actually give a course so people can go on there and take a course. And right now you have a coupon that Dr. Phil 89, I think, or, Dr. Yep, Phil, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. I think it's eighty nine. Yeah. Mm, so for eighty nine dollars. Yeah, so so what, what we did there is we were trying to make it. Remember again, I'm a simple guy. I want things to be simple for you. So we did three to five minute classes. They're called micro courses, and you can take it at your leisure. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on your laptop. You're doing it on whatever, and keep doing it over and over and over until you get figured out what we're talking about. And it's a lot of the same stuff, but with more detail and gives you some exercises and that kind of thing to go out and do it. And we'll build on that and we'll add a couple of other things. That's Scott and I have put that one together over time. And if you hit, if you go out right now um, to readbodylanguage.com, which is my domain for my, for my name, you'll find a few things in there you can click for free. And on there is a, a link to um, a, a short course in body language tactics so you can see what we're talking about. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. If you do, you do. It's kind of built around how people learn. I love that. And at the end, you get a certificate of completion, which I love. You know, that means a lot. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like it's um, acknowledging that I finished something, you know, and I've got a little bit of skill in it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I love well, that. Yeah, and you do. I mean, look, I say this to people all the time. There, there's no magic. It's humans learn through a process. Everything we learn, we learn from a process from tying our shoes to riding a bicycle to driving a car. It's the same thing. It's just the same yeah. stuff. Do it over and over and over and it'll stick. You know, one of your, one of the things that you say has become a staple in my language, especially last year. Last year I was working at a residential mental health facility. And of course there, you know, when you've got 30 people around and everybody has a different, you know, mental health illness, or you have five people with schizophrenia and, you know, four people with bipolar and just all these things and all these things are going on. You have to be able to watch or read people. I did the best I could, but, um, I would think all the time you have this saying, the organism does what made the organism successful. And so I would yep. watch, you know, I remember this one young man, he was 19 years old and he was really tall. He was a lot taller than me. And I was talking to him one day and he was just like, you know, putting himself down and just saying, I'm a POS. And I was like, no, that's probably worked for him in the past with his mom and dad. And I was like, no, you're not. Yep. And so I started talking to him in a different way and he just collapsed yep. to the floor. But he, but I noticed that like he was, and I thought that that probably worked for him in the past and I'm not going to allow it to work with me. So I love that though. The organism does what made the organism successful. It's well, so yeah, true. And I don't mean it's necessarily healthy. It just means that's mm -hmm. what got him there. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, what's amazing to me is how often you see corporations, I work in corporations, I work in banking and that kind of thing. And you go in and you'll run into people who've done something the same way for so long. 
it, it's not good for them, but it got them to where they are. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's, it's a powerful tool to remember. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that next. You work in corporate America and wall street. So how does somebody, how does the CEO benefit from body language? Well, first of all, they, I, I usually say we're in the business of people unless we mine salt for our own consumption. Everything we do is about people. Everything humans do is everything you do. Everything I do is about people and connecting with those people. So some of those body language myths we were talking about are important, even if they're wrong, that you do it because it makes people feel more comfortable. And for example, if you think of politicians, and I'm not gonna pick on either side, but if you think of them and you see one of them saying, I'm trying to help, but his elbows are at his side, <laughs> do you believe him? The minute his elbows come away, it looks more helpful, right? Yeah. But when they're locked down, he mm -hmm. looks less helpful. So it's about getting that person to be more open, choosing words that fit, the situation and that kind of thing is usually what I do. And I work in a company as a um, doing due diligence and that in, in buying other companies and, and that as well. So yeah, it's having these people skills is its own little special power is what I usually say to people. I, in yeah. fact, I call them extreme interpersonal skills because they come from really weird places, but they work. If you run meetings the right way, you get outcomes. If you don't, you don't. So. Just you know who I wish that you could train all prosecutors because I'm like, because like some people, some prosecutors I'm a, I'm a are really good. Like uh, Camille Vasquez, she was so good. Mm -hmm. And now this Georgia Kappelman who prosecuted Charlie Adelson and them, she was pretty good, but she was no Camille Vasquez. But I'm, but I was thinking as I was, because right. I'm just now, listen, I'm so far behind. I'm just now watching that trial, that Charlie Adelson trial that was three months ago. Oh, yeah. But That's um, a good one. That's it a good is. One. But I'm thinking like she could benefit, but she did a really good job, but she could have really benefited because she could have got in deeper. I, I, I want him to go deep. And I'm thinking, and I thought, yeah. That she could benefit from from Greg and them guys. <laughs> so, well, questioning just you know, people often will ask the wrong question. They'll ask mm -hmm. a question that's open ended, yes, but it allows a person to ramp, chaff and redirect his mind, of mm -hmm. course. And that's anytime you allow somebody to just ramble and ramble and ramble, it gives them the chance to redirect the conversation and to hide all kinds of things. Yeah. We see it all the time, and there's a ton of stuff that you can learn to control that simply with a leading question, right? For example, if a person in your life is rattling, especially mental health, when a person's rattling and rambling and try, trying to chaff, just ask a yes or no question that forces them out of that stream and you've got control of the conversation yeah. again. Wow, that's true, that's and true. They're, they're not usually good at it. They usually ask leading questions. And prosecutors and, and attorneys in general, they don't get a lot of this. I, I did my first year of law school before I decided I was smart enough to get into a good law school and smart enough to get out, is what I usually <laughs> say. I didn't want to be a lawyer once I started learning about it. And I, I, it was good. It helped me in my career because I can read a contract and I can do that kind of thing. But yeah, along the way, I remember the class they were giving on deposition. And my law professor, I said, those are junky questions. I was teaching interrogation full time. Oh. And he said, you think you can do better? I said, yes. And I went up and did questions. He said, in fact, you can do better. Wow. He wrote in my first book. He wrote in my first book in oh, uh, wow. How to Spot a Liar book. He made a little comment in there about it. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so cool. I love that. I love that. So, yeah. Nice yeah, guy. Real nice guy. yeah so um, I can never be a lawyer. I, I think it's, I don't know. I love to watch it, but I think it would be a boring life. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, also. That was a problem for me. Yeah. I, w I didn't want to do the other part. The litigator stuff would have been fun, what yeah. they're doing, but you don't step into litigator roles. You take a long time. Yeah. And then, you know, you got to prepare, look, a, a five week trial, they've spent three years maybe preparing. So I was like, I don't right. know about that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, also, I want you to please, um, these people don't know me from Adam, but tell, tell, um, Mark and Chase and Scott, I, I just love you guys. So say I was on I the will. show, a little, sure. little hit girl from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and she said she loves us. <laughs> well, Back. I, I have an aunt who, I have an aunt, I won't give you her last name or anything, but I'll just tell you, I have an aunt who lives in Pigeon Forge. Oh, wow. So. Cool. Cool. I may know her. Like I don't run, know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, her name's Lorraine. Her name is Lorraine. I'll Lorraine. leave it at that. Okay. Maybe, so. maybe we'll, our paths will cross and I'll, every Lorraine I meet, I'll say, are you related to Craig Hartley? <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, so I think that you guys, and I even commented this one day on one of your videos. I was like, these are probably the four smartest, most intelligent humans on the planet. And I really mean that. So, uh, oh, and I do want to ask this well, before I, we move on. Go ahead. Okay. Good. No, I was just going to say, my mom would have written you a check to say that. Right. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You guys are. No, like, you're, you're no, so we're just smart. good at a thing and people are good at lots of things. 
Oh, yeah. there's lots of ways to be smart. You hear me say, one of them is not stabbing your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, especially one of the girls I had last year up at my job. She had, she was there for like severe anger. Like she, oh, yeah. she was there for anger management. And um, she was just really down on herself one day. And I said, tell me a win. Tell me what one of your wins was today. And she said, I don't have a win. I didn't do any good. And I said, did you hit somebody with a chair today? And she said, no. And I said, that's a win. You didn't hit anybody. <laughs> did you, you know, did you poke somebody's eye out with a pencil? No, that's a, that's a win. So for her, that was a win, you know, because like she was so far into it. So not killing somebody right. is, is a win. That's, that's a good thing. <laughs> so, but I want to ask yeah. you this before we move on. Why have you guys not done, and I have my own theory, but I want to know, why have you guys not covered Nicole? Kessinger. I don't think you've covered her, have you? Oh, yeah. no, we haven't. You're talking about Chris Watts. Chris Watts. Girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I just, I, look, anything that people get upset that we cover or don't cover, it's my fault. Oh, okay. Because I choose every video we do. One exception, Scott had to cut up, I was in Yosemite last weekend, and uh, this whole thing with um, Fonnie Willis came out. So yeah. I had to call Scott and say, can you cut the video? Because I can't. <laughs> and you'll probably see a little a little difference. Scott was like, I'm never doing that again. Because it takes <laughs> a lot of hours to watch and pick yeah. out the things. Now, see, I but, thought he was one that done it. I thought he was no, one that he does. It. So we have a great division of labor. It's I'm the guy who finds every video, everything we've ever shown except that I've found. Oh, okay. And then I, I timestamp it. I'll watch all eight hours of a trial wow. and timestamp the nine pieces I care about. Send it to Scott. He'll pull the clips down. He'll put them in a box, in the drop box. There's one right now for tomorrow. And we'll take that drop box. Each one of us will go watch the videos, make our own notes. And the first time we have ever talked about the case is when we're together. When, yeah. when we're together. So for me, what I'm looking for usually is I, I, the Chris Watts thing to me has been done to death. I, okay. So my theory, the reason you guys hadn't done Nicole Kessinger was because I've watched her on, um, I've watched another YouTube channel cover her. And a lot of people say that her dad was because he was in there with her when she was being interrogated and that her dad mm -hmm. was somehow um in with the police or something and that he won't allow it and i thought maybe you guys were afraid to go no. down that path oh okay no. <laughs> we're not afraid trust uh, me. <laughs> if you look at some of the people we've covered we're not afraid yeah we're, we are quite willing to go after anybody who is doing that and we just covered i live in georgia and we just covered the uh, Fulton County DA. Maybe I needed to stay out of that county for oh, a little wow. while. But, but, <laughs> Probably. But at, at the end of the day, I, I don't. We cover politicians. What we try really hard not to do. The reason you don't see us just grab politics constantly mm -hmm. is we have a good mix of people. And I always say, please be respectful of each other's mm -hmm. opinions. And I, I don't necessarily agree with other people's politics or that kind of thing. But what I don't do is I don't make a political issue of body language. It's not mm -hmm. usually valuable. Now I will say this guy's lying, and and. And it happens yeah. occasionally you'll hear us do it yeah. but we try in terms of other than that when the if there is a debate this year we'll cover the debates we did last election cycle it was our first year together and we covered the first the all the debates so we'll try to do that uh, and then short of that it, 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 we cover putin you know we cover yeah if you can think of somebody we'll do it and so she's i'll look at her and if she is interesting enough that week, I'll pull her up. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys don't like don't like my taste in people, that's a different story. <laughs> no, I, I love it. Try to find somebody amusing. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I said I've watched every video you've done, but I haven't because I I don't watch the polit the politicians. I just politics is a Most place I just stay out of. I'm just like I don't even that. Um, I think you called her Fanny Willis, Fanny Funny. <laughs> I didn't watch that yeah. one the other day because I'm just like I don't I don't. I just don't, I, I keep politics out of my show. I try to keep it out of my Facebook, yeah. out of oh, my yeah. life. Same, and just, same. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, well, here's, like, hey. here's what I say is when we covered her, I covered her as if she were just, you know, a woman yeah. who was being questioned about impropriety as it were. That's the mm -hmm. way I treated it. Yeah. Because if you start to become a red and blue politics guy, you're falling for that whole thing. And we yeah. try really hard to keep that under control. The interesting piece to me is how many people come to the show already with their mind made up that somebody did something. Mm -hmm. And when we say, well, I don't believe they did, man, they melt down. Yeah. And it's because they're Maslow, <laughs> you know, they they know more facts. Yep. I, we had Summer Wells folks. I mean, they were all over mm -hmm. us over Don, for example. Yeah. And then I think there've been others where, you know, something happens and next thing you know, we're the bad guys. Yeah, and, I, and I that's did. Okay. I did see some comments on that video the other day, though, and one of the first comments, a guy was like, he was like jumping in y'all's crap about it, and I thought, you know, yeah. so it probably wouldn't matter what you said. I mean, some people are going to like it, it, some people aren't. Um, I, I love the the thing where 
it was on that 10 hour Amber Heard thing. Scott had the mustache on one of the clips and he said, and you said, go put a filter on it. And then he goes, yeah, nobody will notice. And then Mark goes, yeah, they will. <laughs> because everybody, because <laughs> we notice every single thing. Like we do. That's just you right. know, what we do. Because we're, because your, your viewers, your fans, your followers, we're, we're highly invested in your channel. So we know everything. Well, we're, so, we're really thankful. We're really thankful for all of you. You've um, got to know that. One day, and I forget how long ago this was, the boxes were different. I, I thought I was, my OCD, I thought I was going to have a meltdown. I was like, no, I couldn't, bear, I couldn't hardly watch it. And I was like, no, please, because, you know, we get used to seeing a certain thing a certain way. And then when it, you know, when it was different, I was like, no, I'm going to melt down. So. Well, you know, what's funny is we had no plan to be permanently in those boxes or we had no idea it was going to go. When we first started this, I'd been talking about doing a Bigfoot thing forever. And we first started it. We were like, eh, let's see if people like it. And we were just astounded at how nice everybody's been and how much people like. And, and look, we don't control. One of the things that we made an early on decision is that we don't control comments. We don't go in and affect yeah. comments. We don't. Yeah. And we do when there's a live chat. And we premiere on Thursdays. Every Thursday at 1230, we mm -hmm. premiere a new video. And in live chat, we have moderators. And I'll say, please be kind. Please be polite. That's all I'll say. Yeah. And we will boot people there. But once yeah. it's in the com <clears throat> when a, when a video the most, I think the most comments we have on any video is probably Andrew, and I think there's 37,000 comments in there. Wow. You can't police <laughs> yeah. that. <It's laughs> yeah. just, all we can do is turn it off and not allow yeah. you to comment. Yeah. And I don't think that's fair to people. No, that would hurt. That would hurt. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so my last you, question that I want to ask you, because it seems like you've done, I mean, everything in life, like all, all of your accomplishments. Is there something on your bucket list professionally that you haven't done yet mm -hmm. that you would like to do? You know, I, I try really hard in my life to not think I have a plan and to think somebody bigger than me has that plan and I get to do whatever comes along my way. And I've been lucky. I would say I, I just have been lucky. This TV thing, to give you an example, I started trying to get a TV show across the line in 2003 wow. and almost had it, almost had it, had contract the whole thing. And then Abu Ghraib broke. You remember that, the mm -hmm. torture thing yeah. and destroyed the show I was going to try to do. Mm -hmm. So in that whole time, it's just been and look, why would Dr. Phil notice me? Why would he call us? So I always just say, I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I, but I kind of have this theory that if you just follow what you see is right and you try to, you know, no, no deep thought here, but just keep your head up and pay attention to opportunities and work mm -hmm. hard when you get a chance. Yeah. This, for, for all the people who hate what we are, this is still the only place on earth that you can come from absolute poverty and end up somewhere. And absolutely it's, it's a great place yeah. for that yeah I, I agree with that absolutely and i hate to say absolutely because i know you guys say anytime somebody says absolutely, <laughs> absolutely i did not oh and another thing too before i go adam i know we're running along but i want to say this too i from going to college you know writing academic papers you can't put a contraction so you have to do i did not and i got right. into doing that a lot so sometimes i will say i did not and i'm like and i hear your voices and i you guys haunt me because i hear your voices and i go <laughs> maybe i should have said i did but that's i think that's from just being in school for since 2018 well, january it's baseline. 18. It's, baseline. <laughs> it's baseline it's okay yeah. it, you know like i always say it's okay if you do this all the time but if you do that one time then we got a problem <laughs> Yeah. So listen, I want to thank you so much. Thank you for putting me at ease. I'm a little, I'm still nervous, but a little less nervous than when we first started. I'm not sweating as bad as I was. So thank you for that. But thank you for coming on. I appreciate this. Listen, I'm so honored. It's, it's been a real true honor and a true privilege to, to talk to you and have you on because I am such a huge fan. And, um, well, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thanks for watching us so much. Yeah. Uh, we, we really appreciate you more than you know. Yeah, and I would love to meet you in person one day. The next time you, I didn't know y'all were having that big crime con because when I saw that, I was like, "How did I not know that?" I would love to come to like a panel and watch you guys. So that was I was we're, disappointed. We're in Nashville for Crime Con in May. Ooh, I'm only three hours from Nashville. Yeah. yeah, so you should come over. Yeah, I will. I'll try my best. So, but anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Real pleasure. And I will say something to Dr. Phil. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you guys for watching today. I know you have loved Greg Hartley just as much as I have. And we'll put all of his information at the end of the show on the screen. And remember to always dream big because big dreams do come true. Sheerly Blessed Designs, owned and operated by cosmetologist Stacy Wilson, offers a full line of services, including haircuts, color, texturizing, and even waxing. If your tresses need some TLC or if you just need a self-care day, call Stacy at 865-363-7000.
7076 to schedule an appointment. Everyone deserves to look and feel their absolute best. Surely Blessed Designs is located at 10015 Rutledge Pike in Corrington, Tennessee.